Today, I'm diving into a super practical topic that can save you time, money, and headaches. How to clean your car's oxygen sensor without ever taking it out. If your check engine light is glowing, your gas mileage is tanking, or your car just feels sluggish, a dirty oxygen sensor might be the culprit. Instead of shelling out cash for a new one, I'm going to walk you through two proven methods to get that sensor sparkling clean and your engine running like a dream. Before we jump into the cleaning process, let's break down what an oxygen sensor does, why it gets dirty, and how cleaning it can make a big difference. Then, I'll guide you step-by-step -step through both methods, share some pro tips, and answer the most common questions I get about this topic. Let's get started. What does an oxygen sensor do? Your car's oxygen sensor is a small but mighty component in your exhaust system. Its job? To measure the oxygen levels in the exhaust gases as they exit the engine. It sends this data to your car's brain, the engine control unit, or ECU, which uses it to fine-tune the air-fuel mixture for optimal combustion. When the sensor's working properly, you get better fuel efficiency, your car burns less gas, smoother performance, no stuttering or rough idling. Lower emissions. Keeps your car eco-friendly. Protection for expensive parts, like your catalytic converter, which can cost $500 to $2,500 to replace. But when the sensor gets gunked up with carbon deposits or other contaminants, it starts sending wonky signals to the ECU. This messes up the air-fuel ratio, leading to poor gas mileage. Who wants to spend more at the pump? Rough idling or shaky engine performance. Sluggish acceleration that makes your car feel like it's dragging. Potential damage to the catalytic converter, which is a pricey fix. Cleaning your oxygen sensor regularly can prevent these issues, extend the life of your engine, and keep your wallet happy. So, let's explore two effective ways to clean it without removing it from your car. Method 1. Fuel System Cleaner. The Easy Approach. Let's start with the simplest way to clean your oxygen sensor, using a fuel system cleaner. This method is perfect if you're looking for a low-effort, maintenance-style approach. Here's how it works and what you need to know. What you'll need. A high-quality fuel system cleaner labeled as oxygen sensor safe. Some great options include Chevron Tecron Fuel System Cleaner, Royal Purple, Max Clean Gum Out, Regain Complete Fuel System Cleaner, Lucas Oil Deep Clean BG 44K Fuel System Cleaner, a fuel tank that's about one quarter full, for best mixing. How to do it. Pour the cleaner into your fuel tank. Follow the instructions on the bottle for the correct amount, but typically one bottle treats a standard tank. Go for a drive. Take your car on a 20 to 30 minute drive, keeping the engine RPMs between 2,000 and 3,000. This ensures the cleaner mixes thoroughly with the fuel and circulates through the combustion process. Repeat if needed. This method is gradual, so it might take a couple of tanks of gas to see noticeable results, especially if your sensor has light to moderate buildup. Why it works. The cleaner gets burned during combustion, passing through the exhaust system and gently scrubbing away carbon deposits on the oxygen sensor. It's like giving your engine a detox. This method also cleans other parts of the fuel system, like injectors, so it's a win-win. Pro tip. Always double-check that the cleaner is safe for oxygen sensors and catalytic converters. Using the wrong product could damage these sensitive components, and nobody wants that. Also, this method works best for maintenance or light carbon buildup. If your sensor is heavily coated, you'll want to try the second method, which I'll cover next. Method 2. Vacuum line cleaning. The heavy-duty solution. If your oxygen sensor is caked in carbon, like the nasty blackened sensor I'm showing on screen, this next method is your best bet. It's called the vacuum line cleaning method. And while it's a bit more involved, it's incredibly effective for upstream oxygen sensors, the ones before the catalytic converter. The best part? You still don't need to remove the sensor. Let's break it down step by step. What you'll need. A sensor-safe carburetor or intake valve cleaner. Check the label to confirm it's safe for oxygen sensors and catalytic converters. A vacuum hose connected to your intake manifold. A straw nozzle, usually included with the cleaner can. About 15 minutes of your time. Step-by-step -step process. Locate a vacuum line. Find a small vacuum hose connected to your intake manifold. 
This is where the cleaner will be introduced into the engine. Prepare the straw. Disconnect the vacuum hose carefully and insert the straw nozzle into the hose. Secure it so it stays in place, then attach the cleaner can spray nozzle to the straw's exposed end. Warm up the engine. Start your car and let it run until it reaches normal operating temperature, usually 5 to 10 minutes. Keep the RPMs around 2,000 to prevent stalling. Spray the cleaner. With the engine running, spray short bursts of the cleaner through the straw into the vacuum line for about 30 seconds at a time. Pause for a moment, then repeat until you've used about half the can. Go slow. Spraying too much at once can flood the engine or cause it to stall. Rev the engine. This helps the cleaner burn off and dislodge carbon deposits from the sensor as it passes through the exhaust. Let it cool. Turn off the engine and let it cool completely before touching any components to avoid burns. Check the results. If you want to see the difference, you can remove the sensor for a visual inspection, like I did for this demo, but it's not necessary. The sensor should look cleaner and free of heavy carbon buildup. Why it works. The cleaner is sucked into the engine through the vacuum line, burned during combustion, and carried through the exhaust system, where it cleans the oxygen sensor's tip. The high heat and chemical action break down stubborn carbon deposits, restoring the sensor's accuracy. Important notes. This method works best for the upstream oxygen sensor, before the catalytic converter. The downstream sensor, after the converter, is harder to clean this way due to reduced exhaust flow. Avoid using traditional carb cleaners unless they're explicitly labeled as sensor safe. Harsh chemicals can damage the sensor or other emission components. If your sensor is physically damaged, contaminated with oil or coolant, or giving faulty readings, cleaning won't fix it. You'll need to replace it, and I'll link a video on how to do that in the description. Visual proof. Check out the before and after I'm showing here. The sensor went from black and grimy to clean and shiny, without scrubbing or soaking. Just the power of the right cleaner and your engine's heat. Method 3. How to know. If the cleaning worked, after cleaning, you'll want to confirm that your efforts paid off. Here's how. Use an OBD2 scanner. Plug in a basic scanner, they're affordable and easy to use, to clear the check engine light. Drive for a bit, and if the light stays off, the cleaning likely worked. Monitor performance. Pay attention to your car's behavior. Improved fuel economy, smoother idling, and better throttle response are signs of success. Check for codes. If codes like P00130, P00135, or other sensor-related errors don't return, you're in good shape. Method 4. When cleaning won't cut it. Cleaning is great, but it's not a cure-all. If your oxygen sensor is cracked, damaged, or contaminated with oil or coolant, no amount of cleaning will help. In those cases, replacement is the only option. Also, if the cleaning doesn't resolve your check engine light or performance issues, it's time to consult a mechanic or consider a new sensor. Frequently asked questions. Let's tackle some common questions I get about cleaning oxygen sensors. Can I clean both upstream and downstream sensors with these methods? A. The vacuum line method works best for the upstream sensor, before the catalytic converter, because it's exposed to direct exhaust flow. The downstream sensor, located after the converter, is harder to clean effectively with these methods due to lower flow. Can I just spray cleaner directly onto the sensor while it's installed? Nope, that won't work. The sensor's sensing element is inside the exhaust pipe, and external spraying won't reach it. You need the cleaner to pass through the combustion process to clean the sensor properly. How do I know if the cleaning was successful? Clear the check engine light with an OBD2 scanner and take a test drive. If the light stays off and your car runs smoother with better gas mileage, the cleaning did its job. Persistent codes like P0130 or P0151 may indicate a deeper issue. How often should I clean my oxygen sensor? As a general rule, consider using a fuel system cleaner every 10,000 to 15,000 miles as part of routine maintenance. If you drive in dusty areas or use low-quality fuel, you might need to clean more frequently. Will cleaning fix a damaged sensor? Unfortunately, no. If the sensor is physically broken, soaked in oil or coolant, or sending faulty voltage signals, it's time for a replacement. Cleaning only works for sensors that are dirty, but otherwise functional. Quick recap and final tips. To wrap things up, here's the deal. Number one, fuel system cleaner. 
Perfect for regular maintenance or lightly dirty sensors. Just pour it in, drive, and let it work its magic over a few tanks. Number two, vacuum line cleaning. Ideal for heavily clogged upstream sensors. It's more hands-on but delivers fast, effective results without removing the sensor. Always use sensor-safe products to protect your car's emission system. Check your results with an OBD2 scanner and keep an eye on your car's performance. If you found this guide helpful, give us a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and drop a comment with any questions or tips of your own. I read and respond to as many as I can. Also, check out our other video on cleaning fuel injectors without removal for more engine-saving hacks. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.